when I was a kid, something that always put me off is how um, people would complain about the seasons. And they'd be like, oh, man, I hate winter. Well, it's winter. And then in summer, they'd be like, oh, I hate being hot. And so as a kid, I always was like, man, that sucks. And that's facetious. Them's bitches. I'm just going to be – I'm going to enjoy whatever season I'm, I'm in no matter what. And so I've, I always came to appreciate all seasons. Um, but in more recent years, autumn has become more problematic for me. Uh, I used to get excited to go trick-or-treating, but uh, then I turned, what, 16? And like 15 and 14 and 15 are already pushing it. Uh, but 16 is a little much. So I don't go trick-or-treating anymore. Um, from 2012 to now, I used to get excited about uh, the shitstorm. But uh, that doesn't happen anymore. I didn't do anything for last year's because everyone I would have hung out with was either out of town or didn't do anything with me. Um, had a problematic, traumatic breakup in autumn a couple years ago. Uh, so, you know, autumn might be my least favorite season of, of the four. I'm depressed, and it's not really a secret that I uh, let's play stuff nostalgically valuable to me from my past. Uh, in fact, I would say it's my primary brand, besides roguelikes and uh, stuff that has a story. And for some reason, this year I feel different about Autumn. I feel hopeful. I feel like I'm going to be able to uh, appreciate Autumn like I should. And that kind of started when I realized that this game was free on Steam. Hey gang, uh, I'm Alfred. Oh. And this is that game that was free on Steam. Oh god. Oh Jesus. Well, it's not responding. Good sign. Come on. Why doesn't this fit? It's set to 720. Lord. Oh. Something's happening. Okay. So, I'm honestly not sure how I should introduce this episode. Um, I like horror games. And it is currently uh, September for me, but October for you. And fall is starting around here. So, I want to be spooked. So, to do that, I've decided to play Cry of Fear. Now, now, I'm not really sure of how to introduce this game. <laughs> uh, however, oh boy. Okay, that has to go up. That's fine. I'm going to turn the brightness up. Oh, did I just fucking crash my recording? And we're back. Looks like it works. So, this is a survival horror game. It's essentially a Silent Hill game, but in first person and more of a shooter. And it's actually originally a mod for Half-Life 1, which is very cool. So, I want everyone to... This game has a twist, because it's a Silent Hill game. And after Silent Hill 2, every Silent Hill game must have a twist. It is the law. I want everyone to watch out for suicide. The, uh, uh, both the mention of it or the performance of it. I want you to look out for paralysisation. Uh, legs being missing. Um, something else. Depression. Depression's a big one. 
uh, something being stuck in one place that like it can't move, as though it were missing uh, legs. Um, and then this one, this one is just a uh, personal favorite of mine. I want you to look out for fake products. Like fake shampoo brands that don't exist. And in case all the mentions of paralysis, uh, paralysis suicide, depression didn't uh, uh, get your gorge up, I am going to put a big fucking trigger warning on this game. This game is not... Uh, this game is very serious in its portrayal of mental health. Um, and like, just, just watch out for that. But let's start a new game. Um, I honestly want to just play on easy. Ah, because this is literally just enemy health bars. Uh, I'll do easy. Why not? Big old white light. Oop. Oh. Remember that this is a, uh, something like a 10 year old mod built out of a. I've always I felt alone my whole life, as long as I can remember. I don't know if I like it or if I'm just used to it. My whole life. But I know this. For as long as I can remember. Oh, wait, hold on. He's actually saying it. Used to it. But I do know this. Being lonely does things to you. Feeling shit, bitter and angry all the time just... Eats away at you. Spooky. Turn that audio back down. Let's have a bit quiet. Let's have a bit a little louder. Cat. A horribly modeled cat. Jesus. Can't remember if anything bad happens to that cat, but I know the developers do not like cats. Hey, if you see crappy, uh, if you hear crappy voice acting, by the way, as well, watch out for that. It's not super common in this game, but the cast were amateurs, at the start, at least. Uh, and in some cases, they actually got better as the game went on. <laughs> yeah, what country was this game made in? Sweden? Sigstanti. La Seholman. Yes, this is made out of the Half Life 1 engine, which is called Gold Source for those of you who I hate the Levik. So it's a. What is that? A 23 year old engine with a 10 year old mod made for it. So if it runs poor. Cry of fear. Oh, is, that my, is that my glasses blurred? Oh, oh, oh no, the, the logo is just smeared all over the screen horizontally for some fucking reason. Ooh, self-harm. Self-harm is another thing to look out for. <laughs> That's morbid. I just checked my wrist like, huh. Just look out for that. Emo teens, another big one to look out for. I don't know if Simon, for that is our protagonist, is the uh, is a teenager still technically, but he is the one with all the hallmarks of it. You know, it's weird, but that is kind of an iconic character design. Though he does kind of look like Alex Mercer from Prototype. Great walking animation. Bonova. I imagine that that's a fake uh, product. Help me. Somebody. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Police. What happened? 
drag himself forward without using his legs. Ain't got no legs. You know, I would honestly love to make a mod like this. I'd certainly love to um, art direct and write for it, but I am kind of hopeless at development uh, because I, try as I might, I can't fucking figure out how to code. Is that a tool music video? You know, there are probably pens, dude. This game's very edgy. Wake up. Take the camera. Oh, hey, this is also a 2010, uh, 2010s, or maybe even late 2000s era horror game, so, um, fucking jump scares. There's a reason this game is popular. Uh, big obvious poster for Half-Life 2, because, you know. I love how the camera has a reload animation. Check it. So yeah, this camera is actually, this is weird. This camera is actually the most powerful weapon in the game. But you only have it for this short sequence at the beginning. <laughs> um, however, if you beat it on extreme mode, I believe. I forget what the difficulty is called. But if you beat it on one of the super hard modes, you actually unlock use of the camera like a normal weapon. Up, oh, hanging man, suicide. Broken mirror. Do I? Oh wait, do I? Okay, yeah, crouch jump. One of these is a jump scare. I think it's this one. So edgy. Yeah, and then there's an extreme jump scare at the very end. Can't take it anymore. Written in blood. Uh, woman threatening to kill herself in a mirror. Nothing, I guess. It's a cool effect. This is actually something that was left in the game from an earlier version. Boo. Okay, now maybe the next one. Or it might not even be when you take the picture. It might just be on the way there. Because, like, they don't... Yeah, there you go. See? They don't put that kind of uh, that kind of space there unless they're gonna give you a big old boo. Okay. All right. And I've awoken in an alleyway. One moment, Simon. doing here? Hmm. Oh, his model looks like crap. Again. 97 was this engine. Okay. Chapter 1, Lost in the City. Sand. I assume that's sanitation. Got a, what is this, flick knife? Les Storms. Looks pretty good. But yeah, I would I would love to develop a... I thought I saw something up there for a second. Oh, I did see something. I would love to develop a game like this where... Here we go. Easy to handle, but weak with an ineffective range. Mobile phone. Phone screen can be accessed by selecting use. So I've got a, a, a pool of run juice here, as you can see. Allows me to sprint. Crow. I can do shit in the inventory. Huh? 
Where are you? Come home as soon as possible. It's getting dark. Yeah, so right click, you can switch it for a stabe. Which is the actual way that you're supposed to use a knife. Oh boy. So I'll be back for you later. I'm gonna go to the padlock. I remember this game has awful puzzles. Help me. Help me. I'm trying to read some of this graffiti. Yeah, like games like this. Strange, there's no lock. Maybe it's because the uh, handle's just painted on hair out of my eyes. I'm a beautiful man with very long hair. Ooh, did I see a monster? Nope. So, uh, it's always in my face. How the fuck did I get into this, <laughs> this one particularly? <laughs> Like, did someone drop me from up there? Because this is a dead end, so I have to be... Like, someone would either have to walk back all that way and then lock the door. Wait, did they padlock the door from the outside? <laughs> I'm not sure if those are the combination. I totally don't remember this game. It has been so long since I played this game, so please excuse my awful memory. It's usually pretty good, but for this game, no promises. Very nice looking early area. Very gray and drab, but the, uh, it helps make the game look bleak. That's what the game wants. <laughs> That's fucking great. Oh, and of course you can only do it one way. There we go. Okay, see, so you click it. Oh, gold source. It's a good engine. Very reliable. Still works well. Alright, so I googled where the fuck I'm supposed to actually go. Yeah, because we're already there. Tell me that I am uh, supposed to go to a town square area. Which I don't even remember. And it said that the developers uh, made the puzzle like this specifically so that they would force the player to go to the town square area. Which is weird because you'd think that they would just put it in the town square area. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. Like, I didn't even try that door. But also, it's the same model as the door that doesn't work. So, how is I to know? Okay. Yeah, they, they've specifically made the puzzle in the opening sequen, uh, sequence in such a way that, ooh, cool. that one cannot Google it. See, when I see boards up like this, I just think, gotta be a, uh... gotta be a big old crowbar gate that you can just bash through. That's obvious. The 
Hold still the mobile with the light on. A dim light will still shine through your bag. Is there a holster button? Do uh oh my god, that's my phone. That's my phone itself. I can call things on the phone. Interest okay, why is that here? It made a little sense earlier if it was meant to be a door knocker. Just clearing out the area. Like, can you license Gold Source? Like, I, w I would love to make a game on Gold Source, but I would want to make money off of it. I would want to, you know, be able to pay the programmers for stuff. I wonder, has anyone commissioned an entire game? Yeah. Okay, let me explain my thought process, and then I'll explain how I'm stupid, because I know that I am. I was thinking, so you can have people, you know, you can commission people to make m models. That's plots. What if you, like, commission one guy to make uh, a model of this one enemy? Indestructible pumpkin. And then another guy to make another model. And then you did that for, like, everything in the game. And, like, you commissioned people for the textures. And you didn't do any work. You just commissioned everything and put it all together. I don't think that's legible. And then I realized that's why studios exist. <laughs> that's video game studios. It's all people just being paid. Confuser. Doozer. Confuse-a-doozer. Uh-huh. Cloudy day. Oh, that's nice. I like how the leaves are very clearly just spawning in the air on a, on a tree that doesn't have any leaves. Which doesn't actually make sense. Is this door slightly open? It is. I've always loved including old Renaissance paintings. Actually, one of my all-time favorite things to do in uh, game development is to have fake Renaissance paintings. You know, stuff intentionally made in that style. Yeah, so this painting, actually. A painting that is essentially like a parody of this, I believe. It's either this one or this one. Um, shows up in the game Deus Ex Human Revolution in David Seraph's office. And you can see that the man in the painting has been uh, painted to look like... Cloudy day. Day. Confused doozed. Notes. Doozer. There we go. Oh, confused user. I was reading it like confused doozer. Jesus. There we go. Uh, eight, six, twelve. Cool. Oh, did I see a man outside? Anyway, painting in um, one of the game's villains, I guess, technically, office with the protagonist repainted as um, the main subject in the photo and several other NPCs hidden in other photos like that. Um, the game itself is crap. Not complete crap, but 
There's like this weird wall that just, it looks like they just glued a bunch of rocks to it. The game is um, not complete crap, but at least partially crap. But DMC Devil May Cry has a bunch of um, faked Renaissance paintings that they used for the cutscenes and uh, promotional art. And I've always loved that style. And like, I love seeing a uh, video game protagonist man in a Renaissance painting. Because it looks so out of place, but it looks... It's a neat effect. I don't know how one would commission someone to do that. Because, like, I actually do know where you could commission... Okay, hold on. Right. That's a pretty good lock animation. Anyway. You can put up to three items in your quick slots. He's telling me that because I have a third item? And can save your life. Door won't budge. Okay, so try every door. Ooh, spoopy. What the? <laughs> Why wouldn't it just be a big arrow? save your game at a tape recorder. I should be able to record my thoughts and experiences here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to actually uh, take a little break here. Start editing that episode. Um, but I'll see you guys next time. This has been Cry of Fear, a game that is free to play on Steam and does not even require Half-Life 1. I've been Alfred. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for coming. Bye.